So when you're installing firmware on a controller board for the first time, let's go over some quick tips to ensure that you don't run into any issues. The first one is, is don't actually install your controller board in the printer. You're going to want to flash the firmware with your controller board sitting on a non-conductive surface such as the box it came in. Most controller boards can be powered by the Raspberry Pi for this process, although you may have to adjust a jumper on some boards to power it from the USB versus a power input for the MCU. This will help alleviate some common pitfalls that happen during the firmware installation process. If at any point during the firmware flash you find out something is defective with your board, it's easier to replace something that hasn't been installed yet than to go through all the trouble of installing it only to rip it out. The next thing is, is with some firmware such as Clipper and certain combinations of controller boards, if you have things plugged into the controller board, that may actually prevent you from flashing your new firmware. On most SKR boards, it is quite common where if you have a display hooked up to the Expansion 1, Expansion 2 ports, this can actually prevent new firmware from being flashed. So it's best just to not have anything hooked up. Another reason not to have anything hooked up is depending again on the controller board and the firmware, there's always a chance that things in a default state may not be what you want. For example, I have seen with certain controller boards that the default state for SSRs on some pin assignments is on. The last thing you wanna do is while setting up your printer, have the heater on that you don't know about and cause a runaway or a potential safety issue. So it's best just to not have anything hooked up that could cause a problem if it were to activate without your consent. And lastly, in this state, you can actually go ahead and fully install Clipper and set up your configuration. There is a hierarchy to errors that Clipper shows. So things such as having incorrect pin assignments or having a section of your configuration missing will show before issues such as incorrect thermistor readings. So this way, with this new board, you can go ahead and install your configuration for your desired printer, go through it, make sure everything is set up correctly, correct any issues, and then once you start seeing it throw errors about incorrect thermistor readings, then you know everything should be okay, and you can go ahead and install it in your printer final. Looking for a really flat or heavy duty surface to either keep your printer on or to build your printer on, check out a local countertop manufacturer and ask if they have a scrap pile. Most of them keep offcuts of quartz, marble, granite around for smaller projects or simply waiting to go into the bin. And a lot of times they'll happily sell you a piece for a very reasonable price. Now, when it comes to material selection, I do recommend quartz. Materials such as granite have a tendency to kind of absorb oils, whereas quartz will not. And this piece here was about 17 inches by 27 inches by a little over an inch thick. And I paid just over $20 Canadian for it. And it's flat enough, believe me, for what you're doing when it comes to 3D printing. If you're printing with a direct feed tool head, you're still gonna want a Bowden tube. In this case, a reverse Bowden tube. This helps with two things. One, it prevents your filament from rubbing or dragging on anything during the feed in to your extruder. To help with this, you're actually gonna wanna use a three millimeter ID Bowden tube, not the two millimeter Bowden or the Capricorn tube. In this case, it's just a guide. So you're not gonna want to deal with that extra friction from the tighter Bowden tubes and also, if you're doing any sort of printing operation where you do a rapid move across the bed, there will always be a fixed amount of filament in the Bowden tube. This way, during that rapid move, you don't risk tugging on the filament, causing either it to grind in the extruder or even snap and break. Is it dark inside of your printer? Grab a roll of stick-on LEDs. These are relatively cheap and inexpensive off AliExpress. You can get them in multiple voltages, so you can get the voltage that will plug directly into your power supply. So no need for a buck converter or anything fancy. They have adhesive backing on the back, or if you want to get fancy, you can even print holders for them. They can definitely help a lot when it comes to illuminating printers that are fully enclosed or sit in an area where there's not a good amount of direct overhead lighting. I hope you found these tips helpful, hope you learned something new, and good luck on your build. Thank you.